Let me tell you how much too long the deer hunter is. About three hours. It's 80 minutes past three, and take us through some of the movies that are out this week. Okay, well, let's start with um, with The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, because you had uh, David Thewlis uh-huh. came on on the show. So just in case people didn't hear that, it's an adaptation of a novel by John Boyne uh, set in uh, Germany in World War II. It's the story of a young boy whose father um, is a Gestapo captain. They're in Berlin, and then he gets promoted and he's told that he's going to go out and live in a, in a house somewhere you know out in the country and it's a great big house they get there and it's right next door to a camp and the young boy doesn't understand what the nature of the camp is but because his father hasn't told him anything about it nobody seems to know anything about it not even his mother but then he goes to the camp and through the barbed wire he meets another kid the boy in the striped pajamas and they strike up a strange and awkward relationship here's a clip ask you something. Why do people wear pyjamas all day? They're not pyjamas. Well, those. We have to. They took all of the clothes away. Who did? The soldiers. The soldiers? Why? I don't like soldiers. Do you? I do, quite. My dad's a soldier. But not the sort that takes people's clothes away for no reason. What sort, then? Well, he's the important sort. He's in charge of making everything better for everyone. So is your dad a farmer? No, he's a watchmaker. Or was. Most of the time now, he does men's boots. It's funny how grown-ups can't make their minds up about what they want to do. It's like Pavel. Do you know him? He lives over there. He used to be a doctor. Gave it all up to people potatoes. Now, it's a very difficult subject matter to deal with, and it's a very difficult film to talk about it, but, you know, let's put our best foot forward. The first thing to say is that um, the author of the novel said this, and I think this is quite important. He said, for me, a 34-year-old Irish writer, it seemed that the only respectful way to approach the subject, in this case the Holocaust, was through innocence, with a fable told from the point of view of a rather naive child who couldn't possibly understand the horrors of what he was caught up in. I believe that this naivety is as close as someone of my generation can get to the dreadfulness of that period. Now, clearly, there is a long history of um, cinema dealing with or attempting to deal with the Holocaust. And there are certain, I think, precedents of, you know, attempting to do it through a sort of sense of, of childlike naivety. There is, of course, you know, most famously the Roberto Benigni film, Life is Beautiful, in which the idea is that he, what he attempts to do is to make the experience of a concentration, being in a concentration camp, into a game for, you know, some of the people in there. And, of course, what that famously did was it divided audiences. Actually, in the end, it won over the awards audience. But there were some people I know who were offended by just the, the very idea of attempting to do that. There is also, and I haven't seen it, there is a Jerry Lewis movie called The Day the, the Clown Cried, which I have to say, this, it was, this, was, this was mentioned to me by Pete Bradshaw when I was in, uh, in Cannes last year. And it's a film that Jerry Lewis made about a clown uh, with children in a concentration camp and apparently it was considered to be so ill-judged and so completely wide of the mark that it simply never got released but Lewis was very very proud of it and uh, to this day it hasn't you know it hasn't seen the light of day there is a select group of people who have seen it including oddly enough Harry Shearer um, who went to see it and wrote a thing about it saying it's just you know it's just it's just wrong in so many ways the interesting thing with the, the boy in the striped pajamas is it's beautifully made for a start it's directed by mark herman mark herman's got a very strange cv he started out with doing blame it on the bellboy and he made that thing hope sinks um but on the good side he made brassed off which is one of my just favorite films i've just been on holiday as you know and I, we literally our family drive around listening to the soundtrack of brassed off i love brassed off It'll be I a brass band soundtrack yeah it is and it's but it's absolutely brilliant because you've seen the film yes. you remember it was movie of the month at radio one and it's just great i mean it's a great big sort of political track but it's not it's actually a you know movie about brass bands and Has it's it like, got lots of, isn't it the does it start with the floral dance the floral dance is in it, yes, and there's a wonderful. Is version it the of original by the Brickhouse and Rastrick brass no, band? No, it's it's not Brickhouse and Rastrick, is it? It's the um, it's the other one. It's the, the Terry uh, Wogan version. No, 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 oh, it's not, not the Terry Wogan. No, no, it's but it's not the Brickhouse and Rastrick. It's the other the other great colliery band. His name now completely failed me because I'm you know I'm 45 and I can't remember anything anymore. Anyway, he, I think he's a very very good filmmaker, and you sit there, or at least I sat there watching um, the Boy in the Striped Pajamas for a lot of it, thinking two things. Firstly, who is it aimed at? Okay, is it aimed at a young audience for whom the ho- who don't know about the Holocaust? Okay, and I know that you raised this with David Thewlis, mm-hmm. and what and his answer was. Well, I was just intrigued to know who should go and see it because yeah. it does have the twelve A for obvious yes 
for obvious reasons. And he thought, I mean, the book is very much a kid's book. Uh, well, Have you all, read the book? Yes, we did it on the, we did it on the books panel okay. when it came out a couple of years ago. And he was basically saying, it's filmed for everybody. It is a kid's film because you see it from the point of view of a kid, but it should be viewed with people who you can discuss Let's it with it. afterwards right. because it is it has uh, you know a real shocking ending and that need a really shocking ending really really so bad grammar uh, and that really can't just be left hanging if you're seeing it with you need to 11 12 it, yeah. year olds absolutely well it's interesting that you know the bbfc who they've gave it given it a 12a they say it's it's quite a gentle film for the most part which of course is a strange thing to say about any film set in a concentration camp or set around a concentration camp but it says but uh, the climactic sequence was considered too threatening and horrific to be suitable for children of around 8 um, therefore it's a 12 you know it is a 12 certificate i think it's top end 12 certificate film however i do understand that what it's attempting to do is to take a subject which is frankly unapproachable i mean the, the thing is it's the eternal question is how on earth do you approach the holocaust do you do schindler's list or it, there are some people who would think for example that shoah is the only movie that legitimately approaches it which is literally just the voices the the, the true experiential voices of people re, you know talking about that catastrophic world event i mean it's it's one of those things it's like it's so cataclysmic it's almost impossible to approach in any head-on way which i think is what they're saying so on the good side i think mark herman directs it very well the two performances by the young stars are absolutely really really terrific really engaging one of them was in uh, was in son of rambo jack scanlon who's the kid he is the boy in the striped pajamas. he is the boy in the striped pajamas i mean he it's a brilliant piece of casting because obviously working with, uh, with with very young stars i think he's eight or nine it's so much to do with the director seeing something in them that they may not even know that they have and it it's a I think it's a really terrifically nuanced performance. That said, I spent a lot of the film worrying about it, feeling uncomfortable with memories of the Life is Beautiful issue and and wondering whether this was indeed a way of approaching the subject. And then we got to, to you know to the ending. And I was incredibly impressed that it that it ended in the way that it did. And I have to say deeply upset, which which is exactly what one should be. I don't think it should be possible to come out of that kind of movie without being, you know, profoundly moved. Actually, the question is whether, because it's such a well-known story to people at least of our generation, whether, you know, it always has the same effect. And I found in this case it, it really did. I would be very interested to know what younger viewers think of it. I mean, you know, I know school kids, young school kids are taught Diary of Anne Frank. My daughter's been reading that recently at school. And, and, and so obviously those subjects should be introduced right from the beginning. I think that absolutely, absolutely bringing people up in a knowledge of these events is crucially important because as we all know you know those who do not you know re remember history are condemned to repeat it but i thought it was it was a very strange experience i spent an awful lot of it feeling very very uncomfortable and then was just completely mm. sideswiped by the end and i think in the end it's it's a thumbs up it's a bravo and applaud and certainly to uh, mark herman for doing such a terrific job of, of wrestling such a complicated story but i would be very interested to know how younger viewers react and i would also say that i think i don't know whether you agree with this i think the bbfc saying you know the eight is too young for that ending i think it is true i think there are certain things you just can't approach at that very young age. Well, Andy Magister on this says, a good doctor, my daughter is reading The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas at school at the right. moment. Should I take to see the film? She's 12. Well, I... Yes, go with her. Yes, with, yes. Well, I think that's, talk about I it. think that's exactly it. I think mean, that's the crucial thing. I mean, one of the I know that we've gone over this twelve certificate thing again and again and again. I know I sound a bit like a stuck record, but I think you've hit the nail on the head. Then I'm not for once. I'm not being facetious or sarcastic. The point about this is, it's having somebody with you who can then talk to you about the film, talk to you about the issues. I mean, this is what I mean when I say parents should get engaged with what their children are seeing. It's not to do with censoring what your children see. It's to do with having. It's to do with talking at you know, talking them through the film, whether it's Batman or whether it's this, children need to talk these things through. And actually, I would agree, you know, you need to be accompanied by that, even if you are 12, which, of course, actually, you're, I think 12 is, you know, you, you could go on your own or maybe it's, certain, it's 12 and up, isn't it? But yes, go with a parent if you think your child is up to it. But bear in mind, because of the subject matter, it is. I mean, how did you feel at the end? I mean, I felt really shaken.